but I'm in a little bit of a good spirit because even though my hips still hurt and it's messed up, I'm just trying to think positive at this point. So last night, well, they did the x-ray when I first got here on May the 5th. May the 5th, they did an x-ray and they said the x-ray was fine. And I kept telling them that my hip is not getting better. So what they did was gave me a steroid shot in my hip. When I say that bad boy hurt, bro, do you know what I went through? All right, look at this video. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Three people right there. Yeah. Oh, no spray. Okay. Right. Yeah, let's shoot the spray. Do you like that? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> nice. I don't always do that, but it helps. I don't know. This will be my it's second time. It's a red You can uh, spray. Make sure you shake it. You ready? Super. Until it turns white. Yeah, I signed it off. I left it just as is. What? Do you want to poke? Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> 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 you Good. Do we have a bandage ready? Okay. You want this regular bandage? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, like that. Okay. one more time. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Laird, L A I R D. Yeah. This hurt so bad. Like, it just hurt worse than the first time I got the steroid shot. Yeah, see, I had to do what I had to do because I'm trying to get this thing figured out. The first time I ever got that shot, it worked. It worked. But this second time, it's not working. Like, my hips still hurt. I barely could, like, I can lift it up a little more, but I can't lift it up as like I want to, and I'm still limping. So I told them this pain is way different from the first time. Like the first pain I had before they gave me the shot, this is way different. That's why he had to take the needle out and stick it back in, like he was trying to get it in the whole area of my hip. And I had got this shot two days ago. It takes two, three days to actually see a change, to see if it really worked. Um, it worked a little bit, but it's not doing as much as it needs to be doing so I can go home. Like, I'm, tr I'm trying to go home. Today is March the 10th. My birthday is in nine days, and I'm still in here. I know, I'm trying to go. So, since I told my doctor, my primary care doctor, that it hurt, and I'm not seeing no change, really. I only see a little bit of change. So, what he did was schedule an MRI. An MRI is a better way of seeing what's really going on inside my body like inside the bones you can see everything in the mri so what came back is i have bone infarcts um i'm going to give you the full definition of what they have in the book and then i'll explain it to you in a more sense of for you to understand so bone infarcts are like avascular necrosis okay so if you hear me say avascular necrosis that's like the same thing as the bone infarcts or you'll hear me say osteonecrosis osteonecrosis which is this that's how you spell it and then that's the same as avascular necrosis okay so osteonecrosis is bone death caused by poor blood supply it is most common in the hip and shoulder but can affect other large joints such as the knee elbow wrist and ankle alternative names which i just um informed you guys alternative names is avascular necrosis bone infraction ismatic bone necrosis which is avn or aseptic a, a necrosis okay so 
What causes it? Osteonecrosis occurs when part of the bone does not get blood flow and dies. After a while, the bone can collapse. If osteonecrosis is not treated, the joint deteriorates, leading to severe arthritis. So basically, when I had my sickle cell crisis, um, we go into a crisis and that creates less oxygen in our body. That's why it's good for us to have oxygen when we come in the hospital. So um, once you're in that crisis, you have less oxygen. And what the crisis does is it attacks the bones. And when you don't have enough oxygen getting to those bones or blood supply getting to the bones, it creates holes, little holes inside your bone. The more holes you get, the, the worse your, your bone get, deteriorates. That's the more your bone deteriorates, the worse the holes get. So that's the bone infraction. Infraction is the holes. So basically, I'm 20, I will be 29. I'll be 29 in 10 days. So imagine me in all the crisis I ever had. When I was in the 11th grade and when I was in 12th grade, I got my both of my hips replaced. I got bilateral hip replacement. My left hip got replaced first, then my right hip got replaced. And that was 2010 and two, I'm sorry. That was 2011 and 2012 when I got them replaced. So we're in 2023. Um, surgery lasts between 10 to 15 years or it could last past 15 years. It just depends on the person's body. However, this left leg is not, it's not giving me what I'm looking for. It's not doing its job. So since it is bone infractions, um, I'm waiting for the doctor to see what will be our next move because I really don't want to have another hip replacement, but if it's causing me this much pain, I have to do what I have to do. So once he come in, because what I like to do is before doctors come here, I go on my portal, I go look up what my lab work is, go look up the results of like MRIs, x-rays, like I like to read things before the doctor come in here, because sometimes the doctor will come in here and tell you some bull, and then you be like, you like you don't know, you just go home and you know you're still in pain. But then if you would look at your portal and your blood work still not looking fine, but he sent you home. See, one thing about it, I love my primary care doctor with all my heart. My primary care doctor treat us as we're his children, like really do. So currently right now, um, uh, most of you guys probably don't know because I uploaded like a snippet on Instagram and on TikTok, but my hematologist, um, she just got out of the country, so she's not seeing patients inside the hospital right now. She's only seeing the patients at her office. So she has someone that's consulting and taking care of her patients that is in the hospital, which is me and other siblings who have her. And this hematologist two days ago told me, um, I'm good to go. I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm good to go. He, he writing it as, I can leave. Oh, okay. So primary care doctor come in, I told him, um, I know he cleared me to go, but I really don't feel good. Like I cannot walk, like I need answers. And you know what he did? He overrided me. And he's gonna keep me here until like I could walk out or I feel comfortable enough to go home. Like he would not just push you out the hospital. That's why you really need a primary care doctor that really cares because once your primary care doctor cares and they're on your, um, they're consulting and they're attending on your, um, your your stay, they have the last say so. The last say so. So anybody else could say you could go home. But that primary care doctor is the last say so. Once the primary care doctor say, I'm not, I said I'm home, you gotta go unless you appeal it. So that's why I'm at right now. I'm not I'm not really too much sad. I will be sad if you come in here and say something about a surgery. But I'm just praying that at least tomorrow Tomorrow will be fine. Like, at least tomorrow, let me go home. And then I'm kind of upset, too, because I ordered my packages. It's supposed to come between the 10th and the 12th. Today is the 10th. But it showed me that on the 6th, that instead of they putting everything in one package, they did two packages. So that second package got delivered on March the 6th. And it's not in front of my door. My sister didn't see it. And I had my stepsister go look at my door to see if she seen it um, yesterday. She said no. So hopefully though, like where I live at, they don't steal packages. And I'm, I, I was like, okay. Cause like when I was here last time for them 28 days, I had so much stuff got sent to my house because like I was trying to get my house together, you know? 
and like that's how you know i'm grown too like 29 what i want for real is to redo my house like carpet uh beds like, i just want to redo everything like just get me gift cards for furniture and stuff give me gift cards for me to go do my house like that's what i want to do like i love to make my home a home and my content room is looking it's coming together y'all it's, it's coming together and i love it I love it so I won't have to be laying in the bed all the time or being in the living room all the time. I just need a, like a couch or a lounge, a, a lounge chair to put inside that content room. Like I got the vanity in the little chair, but that's not enough. But yeah, that's how I, you know like you've grown. You, you ain't trying to get clothes and go to clubs and stuff. Now nah, I want to do my house. But yeah, <laughs> um, I just pray that I, I'm home to do this. And I like the neighbors last time they left a note on my door saying, Hey, I seen that you was not home, so I have your packages. You could just come get it when you come home. Like you could just knock on my door and I'll give it to you when you come home. And I was like, Oh, that's so sweet. So hopefully she have this package. I don't have her number or anything, but hopefully she has this package for me. So that's where we're at right now. And mind you, remember when I read and they said avascular necrosis? They said it will be in your shoulders, your hip, like your main joints. My shoulders already have avascular necrosis, but I never had surgery on it. They told me I need surgery, but I never had surgery on it. I'm not getting my shoulders replaced because shoulders are five to ten years. So if it's five to ten years, you know that's less than the hips. I said once my arm is about to fall off, then yeah, we can go ahead and do some shoulder replacements. That's just that's just how I am. Like when it's real bad, okay, that's when I do the surgery. That's when I know, okay, boom. So my hips was real bad in 2011 and 2012. So I had no choice but to do those. So the fact that the avascular necrosis is messing me up again with my hips, I don't know. And I've been more sick in these past two years than anything. Not two years, this one year, like from July, from July to now, I've been in the hospital more than I ever been in my entire life. Like the longest day, 28 days and them 23 days and 30 days i never stayed that long ever in my life <laughs> not even as a child so that's how i know something is wrong with my body i don't know what it is technically but i need to find out um but all we're gonna do we're just gonna pray we're gonna pray we're gonna think good thoughts um i'm gonna be out by the 19th i'm gonna show my ass yeah <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna show my behind um yeah y'all the TK family, y'all know I love y'all. I love y'all support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share.